at Southwark Cathedral today just to do a, a safety meeting with a, a unique twist. What we've done is brought in a, a range of managers from different companies all across the rail industry. We want to use the cathedral to drive home a message that accidents can happen, they can lead to fatalities. Well, welcome to Southwark Cathedral. It's uh, very good to have you here. When uh, those who are organising your day said that they would like to begin here in the cathedral in an act of remembrance, it was absolutely thrilling because nobody is ever asked to do that at the beginning of a, a day's conference together. And people know when the service is coming from Southwark because they hear the railway through those gentle moments of choral music. They can hear the sort of 5.30 going past. And it's a familiar noise and it's a good friend to us. We stand here today remembering with love and affection those who have sadly lost their lives due to electrification incidents. But take out the grandeur of the cathedral and place yourself into what could have been a local parish church and you could be sat right now at the funeral of one of the railway family who never actually got home safe. And whilst we think of the families of those people, we too must not overlook the impact that it has on depots, on teams, on the people that they worked with. It's never actually the same again for us as colleagues who have lost people from our own teams. As we think of that, let's now remember all of those colleagues who sadly never made it home safe. And Andrew and I are going to light 10 candles on the altar and then just have a moment of silence and reflection and hope that we don't have to have a repeat of this service in the respect of numbers added to that list. It's the first time I've ever had an act of remembrance before the start of a conference and it's about marking with respect and actually looking at reality and staring that in the face. I think it was incredibly important to people just to have that time to reflect on what's going to now go throughout the theme of the day. The lighting of the candles I thought was particularly moving and uh, I thought it was very nice. People were very silent and they obviously were focusing on what had happened in the past. There have been friends along the way who have suffered in one case through electrification and another through another incident. So I, you know, I, I took the advantage of uh, the memorial service just to, to attend. It's, it's quite a family trade as well. Uh, my father, uh, my brother works in it as well and my son now as well. So it's particularly poignant for me and my family uh, for me to come here today. We tend to be quite a, a, a boisterous group. But there's, a, there's a, a sort of a, an element of gravitas this morning, you know. We all get used to the dangers and we become very complacent. Uh, and this just brings it home, you know, that it's very dangerous out there and we need, do need to be careful. Thank you all for coming today. My name's uh, Matt Bain. I'm a senior programme manager for Network Rail. I've done 20 years on the railway this year. I started there at 18 as a tea boy. And the only difference now is I don't make tea. I, I love the railway, I really do enjoy coming to work every day. But unfortunately, um, on occasions, it's very, very sad industry to work in because we, we don't all make it home. Well, I've been to three railway funerals in my career in 20 years. I'm not just really unlucky, um, it happens a lot. Uh, people get electrocuted all the time. You can go to work, kiss your family goodbye in the morning, and, um, and you, you never get home. It's just, it's hard to take. I don't know whether anybody's got any questions or they wanted to add anything. So we'll break into rooms now. The purpose of the breakout areas is to get the view of everybody taking part by 
breaking them into smaller teams, they can discuss their previous experience so that we can use that to make things better and safer out on the site. Everybody's opened up on uh, the accidents that they've been involved with or the accidents that they've seen. There's been a lot of sharing and what we wanted to do was share that knowledge again with the wider group so that people in different groups could take away something different. Everyone on our table had at least three or four stories to tell. How many of you actually look back at previous projects at your lessons learned? And it is an opportunity to just say, these are what people are saying, you've got to start listening. What came out of it for us is how we manage our services. We want to make sure that there's a unified approach. We've got to be careful that we're properly coming complacent with it because we have you know, radically improved. These are the things that everybody recognises that are the causes of problems out there. It's about culture change and behaviour change. <laughs> it is about educating the workforce. And every one of these has got a solution. It's something that we need to adopt right across the industry. I think it's a great idea. I really do. I'd like to thank everybody for coming along today. I think Krillian done a done a good job of, of the way they've structured it all. They've put a good um, framework in place so that people feel free to to speak. Because it's got people involved, uh, where they can share their experiences. I think there's an ideal opportunity for for Thameslink to really sort of forge ahead on a couple of these initiatives. The key thing is getting that message across to everybody that uh, you have to work to the plan and work safely and make sure that everybody gets home safely. If there's one thing I hope that people take home, it's the message that the railway is a dangerous place to work. There is a list of names um, out there that people that have just gone to work and they didn't make it home that day. It's our job to make sure that no further people are added to that list.